Hey everybody, welcome into this week's episode of Tony's Spot on Fishing. I'm your host, Tony Krizek. It's doing one of my favorite things today. We got a little bit of drizzle, a little bit of cloud cover, and what does that spell? A good musky day. With me is one of the producers and the editor of Spot on Fishing, Mike Eckerly. We are out here on the Fox Chain of Lakes targeting muskies. Still kind of cool outside. We're going to show you all the tips, tricks, and techniques of how we can get us some toothy critters today. That's all this week on Tony's Spot on Fishing. So what we're doing first, right now, due to the weather conditions that they've had here in northern Illinois and southern Wisconsin for that matter, a lot of precipitation and the water is very high here on the Fox Chain. Right now it's at a no wake stage as we're filming this. So we're actually going to start in Bluff Lake, but to get to Bluff we have to go through vast Lake Marie. So what we're going to start out doing is actually trolling and kind of what we call a zombie troll pattern where we'll kind of do some slow long curving s curves as we go along just over open water just a good way to keep fishing we we can't run fast anywhere so we might as well make the most of the time that we have first forward gear about two and a half to three miles an hour is, is perfect water temperature is right at about 64 degrees surface temp and what we're doing is running more shallower diving baits. We have a Super Shad wrap out and of course an SS Shad. So we're covering between that three, four foot mark down to that six, seven foot mark. Even though at times we may go over 20 some odd feet of water, muskies all hang, they suspend very high in the water column. So we expect to find them in those first few feet like that. But it's just one more little thing we can do to utilize our time under the no wake situations we have out here. So that first trolling pass through Marie proved pretty uneventful. Marked a couple fish here and there, nothing major. And we got into Bluff fishing down the east shoreline. And essentially what I'm doing when I first got on this east shoreline is actually I like to start shallow, kind of keep an eye on the graph. Also, obviously we're watching for fish movement as well, follows, strikes, things of that nature. And we had noticed a lot of fish were hanging more on the brake line because I started to work out. We got in that eight to 10 foot range, seven to 10 foot range, and that's where we started to have a few marks on the electronics. We're realizing that on the east shore, the vegetation really hasn't come up yet, so they're kind of holding more on the brake line. On this first pass through, we got into Airport Bay on Bluff. Oh. Mike had one up on a top reader. Lo and behold, we had nice cabbage. So, as long as we can find vegetation, we know they're gonna be shallow, but if we're on a particular part of a shoreline where there's less vegetation or just fresh emergent stuff, we're gonna back off, we're gonna work those brake lines. Because that's how they're gonna be. They're always gonna be staged somewhere, either up on a flat, or if there isn't enough good vegetation right away, they'll be back out. So always keep your eyes open, not only to your electronics, but vegetation growths on the flats and things like that. But really, one of my favorite shorelines on Bluff is the Holy Shoreline. So Bluff was kind of a bust. We just still only had that one fish up on the top radar that Mike saw back in Airport Bay. So what we've done, we've come back into Marie, but this time we're gonna actually cast some of the weed flats out here. Now Marie is, is very different from what you would consider like traditional musky type situations or, or structure rather. Um, you know, traditionally, and here's some of that vegetation. Traditionally, we like weed flats that come out to break lines and we can fish the outside edges. We can fish the break line itself. Marie's not set up that way. Marie is, the break line's way over there then you're on this mud flat, then vegetation. So it's kind of different. Now it can get pretty thick, so you want to watch what you're throwing. You know, pretty much you can throw bucktails through it, maybe throw a glider down the edge of it sometimes, or of course a topwater. Now one thing we're noticing 
already is this algae bloom. And when the chain gets a bloom like this and you get that green water like that, believe it or not, one of my favorite colors to throw is more of a green type pattern. So you'll see me throwing black and chartreuse, green and chartreuse, um, basically colors like that. Now, black will still work because it's going to give off a, a contrasting color. It's going to actually be a uh, throw a silhouette. So black is always a good option too in, in water clarities like this. But you just got to keep plugging along. Like I said, we are in some high water situations right now. The chain is no wake, as we said at the top of the show. Sitting at about 65 degree water surface temp. You know, and sometimes I've had guys and girls ask me over the years, you know, well, what temps do you like throwing top waters at? And I've caught them in as cold a water as, as 62, 63 degrees on a top water. So being 64, 65, I'm not too overly concerned about it. We already had that one fish move on one. But we're just going to plug away. And essentially, we're just going to work this whole western shoreline of Maria all the way down to the channel for grass. See what we pick off. If we move any fish or catch any fish, we can make a determination whether or not to hit this spot again. But essentially, there's really not a bad spot on the chain. You know, we focus on the, the northern half, Catherine Channel, Marie and Bluff, and logistically, you can, realistically, you can go and, and literally fish every single shoreline and be in good musky water on all four of those lakes. Now, there is a musky tournament going on as well. And when you get a tournament out here, a lot of times fishing muskies, that can make things a little more challenging. I've seen the chain shut down quite a bit when a muskie tournament's running out here. But all you can do is keep your head down and just keep plugging away. You never know when that fish is gonna come. Boy, this day is really turning into a grind here. We've actually moved into the northern part of the chain, fishing uh, the most northern part, Channel and Catherine, and actually fishing the North Bay of Channel right now. And I, the nice thing about this flat on the north end of Channel, we can actually fish it two ways. We can go in real tight to shore, shallow right now this time of year, the weeds aren't too thick, or we can stay out here and fish the main flat and even come back and, and fish the break line to it. But it has just been slow going since that first fish and bluff. Hit a couple spots in Catherine too, and I mean we just can't can't buy a follow right now. So we've kind of decided Mike's gonna stick with that top raider. I mean that's what we saw that first fish on this morning. We still got enough cloud cover to throw it. But I'm bouncing between fishing a glide bait or a twitch bait like a crane, which is actually what I'm doing right now. Weighted with the berms bait system. So this way we can actually get that bait to suspend and hang in the strike zone a little longer. A lot of times, especially when there's a musky tournament out here, this is the, the downside to the chain. When you get that many baits going at once, I've seen it shut it down so many times. I've also had a handful of times where we've done all right, but nine times out of 10, it's, it can tend to be a grind. Didn't know about this one, to be honest about it, but that's all right. We're gonna grind it out and just try to find some active fish. Oh, come on back. She came in so hot on it. I thought that fish would eat.
Oh, well, that's a good sign. That's the first one we've seen since this morning. It's only been about, what, six hours since we've seen one? My goodness. But that fish actually came in kind of deep and then she came straight up shooting towards the crane. I thought she was gonna eat that bait and just turned off on it. At least we finally saw another one. You know, and that's kind of the thing we always stress so much about watching and keeping an eye. You know, and you wanna look at times if you can, you know, two or three feet behind the bait, left, right, down deeper. You never know exactly where those follows may come from. But she wasn't huge. I mean, probably 34, 35. But at this point, I'd take it. Muskies, this is getting stupid. Let's go. Right now. Oh, right this cast. <laughs> Need a net? Oh, yeah. Give me a Stay button, girl. Whoo! Where's she at? Right here. Let me turn her. Right off that point, too. All right. Yep, here she comes. Whoop, stay back. All right, we're gonna turn her. Yep. She's gonna come head first, and she is ours. In the Ooh. bag. Woo! Oh, <laughs> Folks, let me tell you, that has been a struggle. Oh man, my pliers are right over there, buddy. You got the net? Yeah, I got All the right. net. Here are your pliers. Thank you, sir. Oh, man. Whoop. Calm down, girl. Calm down. Calm down. All right, she's free. Boy, this is the best part about having all the proper release tools. She can sit in the water while we get this bait cleared. Because we don't want to go in there with hooks flailing everywhere. Hey, buddy. Whew. How about it, man? I'm gonna turn my trolling motor off here. All right, calm down, girl. Calm down. Oh. Let's get a quick still picture. We're live on Facebook. Are you live? Yeah. There we go. I thought you were taking a picture. No. Well, there we go, folks. That's a fox chain muskie ate that phantom. Whoo, baby. Tell you what, we're going to go ahead and set her right back down. She'll go pretty quick, I believe. Ugh. Ah. And away she goes. Holy cow. Man. I'll tell you what, that was doing some work today, guys. Holy cow. We had perfect conditions. I mean, 
this is exactly what we always wanted. We've always wanted overcast skies, a little bit of drizzle, and we finally got the weather we wanted. The chains at No Wake, they had a big musky tournament out here. We've seen what, three fish, four fish total all day. It was just a matter of time until one got crazy. Coming off of a point here on channel, on the west shoreline, just crushed a phantom. Whew. Always keep going, never give up, man. You will get one to go out here, even on those grinder days. Just keep it going. I don't know, what do you think? We got another one in this? Oh yeah, let's go for it. Let's try for one more. That's spot on fishing right there, baby. Well, I'll tell you what, folks, it, it's just been such a grind out here. Three fish up, you know, two bona fide follows, one real lazy fish that came up very slowly and lethargically. It just, it had to bust loose sooner or later. And that's, when we get to conditions like this on the chain, to me, there's nothing better than throwing a glide bait. I mean, you always hear me talk about the fish calling powers of a top water, and that's true. But if they won't react to it at all, you almost really have to do, go to a glide bait. And that phantom tail, man, just that little extra soft plastic on the back end really helps bring it together. And what we had, we're on the west shoreline of Channel, and I was just telling my camera guys after we kind of regrouped here, I said, you know, I, I really thought about over the years, all the years fishing the chain. I started fishing the chain muskies probably in 1995 or so, and just thinking about all the fish that I've taken off of this point. To the north of that point is a real shallow flat. Under normal conditions, probably three, four feet. Right now with the water being up, it's about five. And on the back side, you can get it dropped down to about seven feet or so. And there's always been fish on that point. And it's one of those points that'll reload throughout the day. You can always come back to it. I was just shocked that we were almost clear in the point and we hadn't seen a fish and finally, finally got that fish to eat. Man, that's just musky fishing some days. Don't quit. When you get favorable conditions, eventually it'll line up. Like I said, there's really no bad water on any of the shorelines of these four northern lakes that we've talked about, but whoo doggy, that felt good. It felt good to connect with one. Well, hey everybody. It's about all the time we have for this week. I hope we we're able to shed some light on just what kind of fishery here is at the Fox Chain for these muskies. Like I say, today was not a typical day by any means. It was a grind. You know, we had uh, three, four fish up. That last one at the end came up and just swiped boat side, came out from underneath. We were able to boat one. A lot of heavy fishing pressure today. We had a lot of musky tournament out here. But I'll tell you what, if you stick to it, even on those days when the pressure's against you and everything just seems to be going wrong, grind it out. You'll still be able to produce some fish out here. That's it, ladies and gentlemen. We sure will be back. We'll show you what a better day will look like on the Fox chain. Because I'll tell you what, multiple fish days are very common out here. So just one of those weird little days, but grinding it out pays off. Fish some gliders this spring. Gold and orange and browns and Catherine and Channel. Your more green stuff and Marie and Bluff. Once again, ladies and gentlemen, my name's Tony Krizak. We'll see you next time on Tony's Spot on Fishing.